This is the same booth at the PDSA, PDAC 2019, but we're talking about a different company now. Uh, also very interesting, Portofino Resources with uh, Mr. David Tafel, Lithium uh, Explorer uh, in Argentina also. Uh, we would like to hear uh, what is happening down there. Um, you put out some news recently about starting exploration again uh, at the Ombro Muerto project. Can you tell us what you have there and what you're doing next? Yes, uh, thanks Bjorn. We've uh, started our activities following up the some very good service, surface sample results that we had last year, over 1,000 milligram per liter lithium in surface samples on the Ombre de Murto uh, projects, Ombre de Murto West. Uh, Ombre de Murto is the probably the most famous salar in Argentina, so brine lithium. There is, and the reason it's famous is because there is production there. FMC has been producing for quite a few years. Galaxy Resources has got a feasibility study, they're Australian listed, and POSCO has now moved into uh, to the Salar. So we've got some very big and very uh, advanced neighbors. Uh, we, following those samples, we've just started a geophysical survey. Uh, we're probably 60 days away or so from results of that, but the geophysical survey will, de will help us determine the the, uh, the depth of the basin that we're in, give us some parameters for our drill program, which should follow fairly closely on the heels of the geophysical survey. Okay, so then you, uh, you'll know the truth, that they say the truth is in the drill bit. Uh, once you've done the drilling, uh, you can gauge uh, how big this thing is, what then, then you'll do some pump tests uh, to de determine the flow, is that correct? Correct. We will do uh, this, the initial program, we raised some money in January, we raised about $600,000, so it was not a, a, a huge raise, a difficult market, uh, as you mentioned um, a, a little while ago in the lithium space, we think that will change fairly soon. The price of lithium is still quite high hist from a historical perspective, and, uh, and I think it will continue. Um, but we will be uh, doing a small drill program, and that should be followed up by a secondary drill program. But uh, we, we need to determine the results from these ones first. So we will do a little bit of pressure testing, but really it's just a testing to see sort of at what depths and what kind of grades we can get down to maybe a couple hundred meters or so below surface. Okay. So we're looking forward to hearing about that for sure. Um, but that is not your only pro uh, project yet. You just uh, announced uh, renegotiation. That's a very difficult word for a German. Renegotiation. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, the terms of uh, for another property. He says about that. Yes, we had a, uh, a letter of intent announced a year and a half, or about a year and a half ago, I guess, with the Jurgo property, which is a little bit farther south. It's about 20 kilometers from the Neolithium. Um, uh, three, what is it? The three Q project was just really at feasibility study stage. It's this is about three thousand hectares in size. We have the whole salar. We have the rights to it. We've negotiated a much lower acquisition cost, a buy-in over time. Um, very low cost for us over the first couple of years. So that will give us enough time to do some sampling, uh, some surface sampling. Uh, that will happen as well over the next uh, quarter or so. So we'll get some results from that, which can then determine our uh, future activity on the Jurgo property also. So you're getting active there. It's, it's been a while since uh, the latest the news before that. Um, what are your thoughts on, on lithium as a whole? Because um, it went up, every lithium stock went up dramatically and uh, came down, went up again, and now everybody's talking about uh, lithium oversupply and prices being depressed. But on the other hand, the way I see it, you have an announcement every day of a new factory being built, of a new uh, car maker uh, wanting to produce batteries, battery makers expanding their capacities. So for me, the depressed prices and and the future demand don't add up. 
No, I think that the you know there was some there was some talk by some investment bankers some time ago about the oversupply, and then that same banker did a uh, a transaction where they brought POSCO to into the Ombre de Murto Salar. So they, they are obviously feeling that there is some future in uh, in more production. Uh, the prices are off from their highs, but they're still at about twelve thousand five hundred dollars per ton for lithium carbonate. That's up from just a, two, three years ago, five thousand dollars a ton. It's it's off of the high, but um, the the market did get to a boiling point for for many lithium companies last year. And it's quieted. It's, it's sort of overshot the I think the equilibrium to the downside. There's really very limited interest from a retail perspective at this moment, but we think that that is going to change. We're aware of 50 mega factories that are in process, lithium producing battery uh, battery factories that are in production now. There is not the supply to be supplying all of those batteries. And as you mentioned, the uh, electric vehicles and, and you know our electronic components are still a big part of our lives. They will continue to be. I just do not see the, either the price of lithium staying at this level or the interest in the lithium stocks for much longer. I, I think that it's going to come to a boiling point where we are going to see the whole industry lift back up again. We're certainly hoping it will be so. Thank you very Not much. Fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank you very much. And uh, we're looking forward to what's happening next at Portofino. Thank you. Thanks, Bjorn.